thank you for being here. Um, we are about to begin the presentation on tree care and planting. I'm going to introduce Karen Zumak and Diana Priesen. Karen um, Zumak is the community forester manager with the Tree Trust, a St. Louis Park based nonprofit whose mission is to improve the community environment by investing in people. She spends her days knee deep in all things tree related, from planting, maintaining, and planting to advocating and educating. She holds degrees from the University of Connecticut in horticulture and geology and, in, and is an International Society of Ar Ar Arboral Culture certified arborist. Diana Priesen is, um, is the community forestry specialist who, with Kieran, makes the tree magic happen at Tree Trust. Diana is responsible for educating and the next generation of tree lovers through the elementary school programs Learning with Trees and is also an ISA certified arborist and a UMD grad with a degree in environmental science. So here you go. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. We are going to do a little bit of uh, PowerPoint, but also mostly Diana will be doing the hard work of uh, ripping up the root ball. Have any of you ordered a tree through the St. Louis Park tree sale? Okay, so um, this information for you guys is particularly pertinent because when you get your trees, this is what your trees will look like. Um, it also is exactly what you're going to need to do to plant your trees properly. So Tree Trust, we're a nationally recognized nonprofit. We started back in 1976 uh, in response to Dutch elm disease. Here we are 40 years later, almost, and facing another crisis with emerald ash borer. Um, certainly knocking on our doorstep here in St. Louis Park, if not here already. So it's really important to plant trees today. So we know that the benefits of trees are the inherent ones like giving us oxygen. They also help to do things like reduce stormwater and uh, erosion. Uh, they also can temper the climate by reducing the urban heat island, creating habitat, saving energy. What we like to say is that trees are superheroes, as by this picture here. We aren't going to just dig a hole that's exactly the same size as that tree container, plop the tree in, um, you'll surely be shortening that tree's life. So of course the important thing to think about when you're planting a tree is the right place. This would be considered the incorrect place for this tree, mostly because they'll never be able to use that garage again. Um, think about the light conditions, think about the soil, think about that mature size. It's really hard sometimes to think about a tree getting to be 50 to 60 feet tall or 50 to 60 feet wide, but it's important to think about before you plant your tree. You want to take a look at the tree before you buy it. Make sure you see things that, um, you know, if you see things like this canker up here, um, you may not want that tree. So make sure you don't see things like these weak attachments where these trees, the branches are really tight to the, to the stem, um, or if you have lots of branches coming out all at once. So there's three different types of tree stocks typically in production. You'll see the bald and burlap, that's usually for those larger commercial plantings, container stock and bare root. We're just gonna be talking about container stock today because that's typically the kind of most consumed uh, type of tree. Um, we have our proper tools. You're going to need those pruners. You're going to need a, a pruning saw that you're willing to cut through dirt with so you don't feel particularly uh, attached to it. Gloves are great, stakes, um, some kind of strapping material in case you need it. Of course, a shovel. Um, but those pruners, having a nice sharp pair of pruners uh, will go a long way. So when you're, move, when, you're, when you're moving your tree, you don't want to just pick it up by the trunk and swing it around. You're going to use, that, use the container for what it's for. You're going to take everything off the tree, um, the tags, the guards, everything, any twine. Um, although it's nice to keep those tags on there so you know what it is, eventually it will end up causing that, that branch to croak. Um, if you see any, any branches that may be broken, um, of course you're going to want to prune those off right back to the trunk. Um, just so you can kind of take care of that before you plant the tree. A lot of times you might see things up high that'll be much easier to access when the tree is still in the container. So when you first plant your tree, you're going to come over to it and you're going to take a look at it. First thing you're going to do is uh, try to get it out of the container, which Diana and I may need to do together. Um, you don't want to pull it by the trunk. You're going to want to pull it by the container. You don't want to tug on the trunk. 
So you'll see um, the trees are in these great containers and they work wonderfully for transporting, but when you need to plant it, sometimes they become a little difficult to get out. You're gonna pull the container side and I'll hold on this way. And then you're gonna pull your tree out of the container and this is what it's gonna look like. So if you were to take that tree like they did in the Home Depot commercial and just plop it in the hole, what do you think is going to happen? It's not going to go anywhere. That's right, because these tree roots grow out. Tree roots don't go down as much as they grow out. So it's really important that we remediate this, what we call circling root syndrome. So that's where that saw comes in, that saw that you're not particularly attached to and don't feel like it's a bad idea to cut through dirt with. Um, one of the things we did before we got started is we found this root collar, which I will explain in a minute, but the most important thing right now is to take care of these circling roots. So Diana's going to take her saw and make pretend she's cutting that birthday cake that says she's 25 again. And uh, we're just going to cut those roots. So basically what you're doing is cutting tangentially around the, around the tree all the way. And what will happen is those tree roots will be given that free and clear kind of signal to say, okay, we're going to start growing again and we're going to start growing out. No more constriction of the container that it was sitting in. Um, yes, you are causing a little bit of damage here, but in the long run, it'll be a much better tree for it. So it's a very, we like to say that planting is a very shocking experience, and this is one of the big reasons why it's so shocking. Um, the pruners, you're gonna, you may see those larger circling roots like Diana's pulling out here. You just want to make sure you're getting that clean cut it will help to get those tree roots growing out again. <laughs> That's why someone's going to take it home today. So while she's going around and uh, cutting that, we're going to just talk about the root flare, which is if you remember when you were a kid, you probably drew a tree that had the root flare kind of coming out at the bottom like I did in this picture here, maybe had a little happy squirrel coming out of there. Um, that root flare is really important because if you plant the tree too deep, what will end up happening is those roots that you've just taken all this time to make sure are going to be given a, a fighting chance uh, can also begin to circle around and girdle the tree. So finding that proper depth for the trunk of your tree is really important. So what we like to say is look for that first pencil size root. Um, a lot of times you may see something like this. This is the root graft here where this tree was grafted onto this root stock. This is not your trunk flare. The trunk flare is a little further down. Um, sometimes in containers you can see it be six inches down in the container or it may be just a few inches down like in this one. Um, you can see those, there's kind of hard to see here but there's a good couple of pencil size roots and you can see that nice trunk flare. So once you find that trunk flare, um, that's going to be the depth of your hole. So you don't ever want to dig your hole before you see your tree and do this work on it. Um, you will do two things. One, make more work for yourself than you need to, and no one wants to do that. And two, make it really difficult for that tree to obtain that right depth, because if you dig the tree too deep, the hole too deep, you'll have to backfill it. You'll never get that solid surface on the bottom for the tree. It'll end up sinking and then you'll be planting too deep again. So make sure you know where that root depth is that you want to plant your tree, then measure it. Go out and dig your hole. You want that tree hole to be two, two to three times as wide as the tree you're planting. So that Home Depot commercial again really can burn me up and now you see why. So uh, two to three times we like to say don't plant a hundred dollar tree in a ten dollar hole. These trees are hundred dollar trees so um, just think about that investment um, as you plant your tree. Big important thing is keeping it two to three times because as these tree roots kind of develop and mature it'll give it that nice kind of looser material for the tree to establish itself. So you're going to put your tree in the hole that you've just created. We're not going to use any, any soil amendments. You're going to use the soil that the tree is growing in. And the reason for that is because, um, you know, if you had the choice of eating your favorite non-healthy food every day of your life, you would probably do that, right? Because it's right there and it's delicious and you love it. Um, those soil amendments, what will happen is it creates kind of what we call the bathtub effect. So the tree roots will be growing and just kind of enjoying that nice backfill, composty deliciousness that you may have put into the hole as opposed to establishing itself in that soil that it's 
going to be living in. So make it used to where it's going to be living, not how it may want to live on what we like to say, well, for me, cheeseburgers and milkshakes. So you said three, two to three times as wide as? Yes. So your tree needs to be wide, not necessarily deep. The depth is determined by where you find that root flare. Yep. And then you don't use that leftover soil. You can use this leftover soil, but don't, you don't want to be putting in a bunch of new additions. A lot of times people think that compost and organic matter and all those things are good to be putting in as backfill for the entire hole instead of that existing soil that you've just taken out. But that's not going to fill in two to three times. Right. So what's, what filler do you use then? The, the, the soil you've removed. When you dug the okay, hole. That, okay, your yep, land the, soil. Yep, the soil that's there. So the important thing, of course, after doing something as shocking as this, of course, is water. You need to water, water, water your trees after you plant them. Um, keeping it on a, a nice slow trickle is a good way to do it. Um, you want to at least get an inch of water a week on your tree, especially when you do something like this to it initially. Um, you're probably going to have to water it every day for those first couple of weeks that the tree is in the ground. Um, but you do need it to, it to kind of dry out a little bit. So you, uh, trees and, and roots need oxygen as well as water. So you need to make sure you're not over loving your tree by watering it so much that it never gets the oxygen it needs to, to grow roots. We also have gator bags, uh, which we are distributing uh, for sale with our tree sale this year. And that's a, a nice little way to make sure that your tree gets the water it needs. You just put it right around the tree like you would put it around your boot, zip it up, and then you stick the hose right up in the top. And it'll fill up to 20 gallons, and that'll give your tree all the water it needs for a week. So if you see one of these trees on your, one of these on your boulevard trees, feel free to fill it. Do, do the city a favor and, and drop a hose in it and get that tree watered so you can reap the benefits of that boulevard tree as well. Mulching. How many of you know what volcano mulching is? Volcano mulching is the bane of all shopping centers' existence uh, and all the trees therein. Uh, mulch is a, is a great tool for keeping moisture within that tree soil, um, also keeping weeds away. But once you start doing something crazy like a volcano, what you're, what you're really introducing is the option for disease and bacteria and fungus and all kinds of things that happen as that mulch will heat up with the moisture. Next thing you know, the bark is, is you know, a, a festering place. So we like to say mulch donuts are the way to go. The rule of three is uh, typically what we like to do. So three inches, three inches away, three inches of mulch, three inches away from the trunk, Three inches in diameter? Three feet wide. I knew, it was, I knew the third one was going was gonna to let me go there. So that'll just keep that nice donut of mulch around the tree. Also allows for rainfall to get in there because if you have the mulch all the way up to the trunk of the tree, you're kind of creating a little bit of a barrier for that stuff that's coming in from the top. So, um, what were those three again? Three feet wide. Three feet wide, three inches from the trunk of the tree, and then three inches deep. Yes. But if you have a tree gator around your, your younger trees, mm -hmm. is that going to be an impediment for that oxygen area to get in if it's kind of covering the... No, because it's not a... Con you know, it will slowly release the water, and then there's, there's that space that'll happen in between. But that's a great question. Um, Looks like I have a few minutes for tree care. So the important thing is, you know, trees are a benefit to everyone, not just you in your, in your own property, but also your neighbors and uh, the community where you live. So keeping your trees happy and healthy is really, really important. Um, looking out for things like in, insect holes. Uh, Diana and I are lovely adorned with our emerald ash borer uh, tattoos. Emerald ash borer is a really big deal. Something to keep an eye out for is most particularly looking for woodpecker damage on ash trees is a really good indicator of emerald ash borer. It hasn't been found here in St. Louis Park yet, but uh, unfortunately it's just a matter of time. Uh, keeping an eye on things like bug masses, um, oozing sap, uh, think about where you're mowing your lawn and if you're mowing your, tr your lawn up around your tree, uh, lawn mowers and weed whips have a terrible uh, history of causing what we like to call is mower blight, um, eventually can girdle the tree and cause it uh, to die prematurely. You always want to make sure that you're going to work with professionals if you need to have some uh, what we call big work done on a tree. 
Keeping your trees watered, especially during those hot summer months, is really important. Um, and like I said earlier, not, not overwatering, but making sure that your tree is also getting the oxygen that it needs. Of course, we have to keep the mulch there. Mulch is really great for other things like adding organic matter to your soil as well. Kind of keeps that feed source, uh, keeps you from having to fertilize. When you're planting your tree and your tree is, sometimes when you'll see with these container trees, you may find that you end up with a root ball that's this big in the end. That's where you find that root flare is all the way down at the bottom of that pot sometimes. In which case you'll probably have to stake that tree. So thinking about staking your tree, it should always just be on for one growing season. You want that tree to be able to establish itself as well. Um, and you're going to use a smooth, um, if you can get something like this, a grommeted nylon strap is great. Um, they sell those at some of the, uh, like uh, Home Depot or um, like uh, Ace Hardware has those sometimes. Um, just really nice because they have that flexibility. They don't, aren't going to damage the tree. You don't want to use anything with wire. Um, old hose also works really well. Um, both the ladies' panty hose as well as uh, regular hose um, can work really well as a soft uh, material to keep the tree from, from getting damaged. You're going to stake um, 90 degrees to the prevailing wind, and that'll just help to kind of keep it stabilized. You don't want it to be super tight. You want it to have a little bit of ability to bend and flex because that's how the tree will build up its uh, wood and strength. Sun protection is important in the winter, especially for thinner bark trees like basswood and maple. Uh, trees in the wintertime can get develop what they call sun scald, and that's just from the sun falling on the tree during the winter months when it's cold and it gets kind of warmed up, the tissues expand, and then as the sun goes down, there's a big constriction and that tissue can get damaged pretty quickly. Of course, something with a crab apple like this, you're going to need to make sure that you have protection around it for um, the animals because mice and rabbits tend to really enjoy uh, the young bark of a crab apple. Uh, so those guards that come with a lot of the trees are great to put on in the winter time. I wouldn't leave it on all season long, um, but it's a good it's a good uh, guard to put on the tree for the to keep the mice away. So, oh, I'm sorry, there's this wrap that you can use. You can buy, it's like a brown, uh, almost like crepe paper that you wrap around the tree, put it on usually in about October, and that'll keep it just up to that first scaffold branch, and that'll protect the trunk. And then pruning, um, typically we do pruning in the winter months. It just kind of uh, is a little bit less ability to get infection and disease transmitted that way. Good to it, uh, remove dead or dying branches, any hazardous branches that you may see, rubbing branches, um, and if you're close to any utilities or power lines, don't touch them. We like to say if you need a chainsaw and a ladder, you probably need an arborist or a professional to take care of those trees, <laughs> which is our next one there. And I think I made it. So <laughs> if you have any questions or you want to come up and take a look at this root ball just to kind of get an idea of what it should look like, um, you can see those roots are, are ready to go out and start growing out and establishing themselves um, in perhaps your yard if you're the lucky winner of this prairie fire crab apple tree. Any questions? We have um, some rings that are made out of old tire ground up. Do you like that or don't like that? would rather have compost around. Um, I, uh, my, my issue with that is that it creates kind of a little micro climate in that soil because of the heat that it absorbs and it really warms up that soil. Um, and I'm not quite sure if it repels water or kind of pushes it away. It does go through, okay. I, the only concern I would have then is just about that soil getting heated up with that kind of extra layer of black on top of it, but. I have one more question. Sure. Um, I didn't take my plastic off my tree from last year. And okay. when I took it off this spring, because it's starting to grow and mm -hmm. so it's pulling apart, there was some moss on there. Oh, Is that okay. going to be an issue? Or I would probably take it off if you can. Just see if you can kind of pull it off around, around there to get it some air. I, I noticed I have like an apple tree, and I saw the outside the bark. It almost looks like, like there's, I don't know, maybe stretch marks or Markings on, mm -hmm. on, the, on the bark itself. How old is the tree? It's young. It's young. Well, the, 
Yeah, the bark is will eventually start maturing and it'll get a little bit thicker and become a little bit cracked. Um, that's probably what you're seeing.